Hello, I'm Lars with uh, Arix Hooks. They say that uh, trout and grayling find uh, maybe over 80% of their food underwater, which I do believe is true. So it's important to have uh, imitations of uh, both the mayflies and the caddisfly and the dragonflies and, the, and so forth of their underwater stages. So um, I'll show you how to tie this uh, simple, effective and uh, cheap uh, mayfly nymph. Uh, these are of course meant uh, to be fished uh, underwater, sometimes uh, quite deep, um, and you will lose some underway, so that's another good reason to tie them uh, simple. And this one is uh, simple and it's fast. Let's have a look. I'm tying this uh, on an Arix 561. Freshwater 561 in size 16, um, but you can tie it in all sorts of sizes and colors. I'll begin by attaching the tying thread, removing the tag end, and I just move the tying thread to the end of the shank in open turns. For both the legs and the tail, I'm just using um, this uh, cheap. Uh, Indian hen and I pick out a feather, clean off the fluff at the bottom just a little bit more and I'll use a small bunch of these for the tails. Pick them out so the fibers are 90 degrees from the hackle stem just to pull them off. I tie them about maybe a little bit longer than the hook gap. It doesn't. It's not critical, so don't fuss over it. Tie them down. Clip off the waist. The rib is just copper wire, which I tie down on the way down. Try and and uh, make sure that the rib comes to the underside of the hook shank. The abdomen and the, uh, the wing case as well is tied with uh, this uh, wool yarn from, uh, from uh, Uni, but you can in fact use uh, embroidery yarn or, or other thin yarns that you might have avail available. This one is a two ply and I've split it so that I use only one ply and when you turn this, you need to be a little bit careful because they're not particularly strong uh, once you've split them into a single ply. On bigger flies, you could of course uh, use both plies. So I tie that down and I end uh, with my tying thread maybe just above uh, or in front of the halfway point uh, of the hook shank. And I twist the yarn up, up uh, just a little bit and I'm not applying much pressure here. But you can see it produces a nice flat body. And I'm not weighting this fly, um, but uh, even so, because uh, almost all of it is wool, which soaks water, it sinks quite well. But if you want to, you can of course uh, weight it both with copper wire or lead wire or tungsten or whatever you have available. I rip the fly just in even fairly open turns and I tie that off with a few turns of thread and just bend and break off that wire. I'm going to use this uh, slightly darker uh, uni yarn uh, for the thorax of the fly and for the thorax, I'm going to use, I'm not going to uh, split them, I'm going to use uh, both plies and I'm going to use three lengths of it. So I just fold it uh, over the hook shank like that. Cut off and tie down like that. 
and make sure that you have just a little bit of space behind the hook eye because uh, these uh, three lengths of, uh, of yarn do take a bit up, uh, take a, up a bit of space uh, when you tie them down. The thorax is just going to be hair here. You could use anything you want. It could be a synthetic dubbing. It could even be a bit of flash. Whatever you like. I don't dub this too tightly because I want it to be a bit fussy. A little bit more. You can see the guard hairs stick out. See now I'm I'm done with the thorax and you can see I have just a little bit of, of space for the wing case. For the legs I'm just going to use the same feather that I used for the tail and I'm simply going to stroke back about that many fibers and I'll cut off the rest. Pull these forwards again and I offer them up from the top of the hook shank. Grab the fibers come over first with a loose turn, trap the fibers. And now don't pull too high because uh, what I'm going to do now is simply to pull them to length. Let's have a look. That looks all right. A couple of tight turns and then cut off. Now simply fold over the thorax. that. A few hard turns and con if you now move your tying thread all the way down to the hook eye you can form your head moving backwards up towards the wing case and catch at least most of the waist ends of the yarn and now finish the fly with a whip finish. Cut off the thread and just uh, check if everything is sitting the way it should. Now this uh, yarn uh, is a bit exposed uh, to the teeth of a trout. So just a couple of small drops of varnish. I like fly tight because it dries quick. That'll secure it and it'll also make it just a little bit darker. And remember when you tie these uh, flies, if you tie them to match uh, a specific insect, remember because it's wool, it will darken a little bit when it becomes wet. Thanks for watching.